Hey guys, so after the part one video, I got hundreds of suggestions and ideas for more fun upgrades I can add to my Ender 3. Thank you all so much for those comments. And even though I can't get to all of them, I decided to choose the ones that were most commonly suggested. Some improve the printer's ease of use and some actually improve the performance and even capabilities of this printer. Woo! So some of these you can print yourself, but most of them this time you'll have to buy. And this time, I'm actually going to start from the stuff I like the most and work my way to the stuff I like the least. All right, let's make this quick. A lot of you guys got pretty nervous about this power supply unit muffler. I don't think there's anything to worry about, but you know what? This didn't really make things that much quieter anyway, so let's just try something else. With the machine turned off and unplugged, you can open up the power supply unit, but I wouldn't touch anything on the inside. Double check the voltage on these fans. If they're 12 volts, you can basically replace them with any Nocto fan. These are just way quieter compared to the stock ones. Next is the Micro Swiss All Metal Hot End. These are a little pricey, but they prevent you from ever needing to replace your PTF e tube. And they can also handle higher temperatures, allowing you to print with nylon and even polycarbonate. It's also super easy to replace the stock hot end with these, so I highly recommend it. The one upgrade that so many of you guys suggested was of course direct drive. And since I liked the all-metal hot end from Micro Swiss so much, I decided to try their direct drive conversion kit. It comes with this gorgeous aluminum cartridge plate that replaces the stock unit's plate, basically a one-to-one. -one. Wait, let me explain. The concept of direct drive is basically, instead of pushing the plastic from the extruder all the way back here, through this long tube to the hot end where it then gets melted, direct drive takes all this stuff and puts it right on the tool head. So the extruder and the tool head moves together as one unit. Now another thing a lot of you guys suggested was of course improving the cooling duct. The stock unit just cools your prints from only one side and it's also very loud and the fans aren't very strong so I basically just took this whole thing off. Then I decided to use the Setsana ducts. It's got a very minimal design that makes it easy to remix, and it also prints very easily in one piece. I printed mine in PETG so that it's a bit more heat resistant, but that meant there was a lot of stringing because my PETG settings suck. My design was a remix of a remix. It's a lot more compact, and it works with this BL touch holder I designed that keeps it at the same height it used to be, while the slots on the fan duct allow it to be height adjustable. So what you just saw and the trick I showed you guys in the last video with the air duster. So I thought these things were fine now since they no longer include any CFCs, which is really bad for the ozone layer. But it turns out there's still a lot of gases in these things that are bad for the environment. So John Johnson suggested a better way. While your glass bed is still warm, you can actually put a couple drops of water along the edges of your print and then capillary forces will actually slowly lift it up. I've tried this before actually, and it's pretty effective. It's not as fast and it doesn't look as cool, but it's probably better for the longevity of your glass bed and it's definitely better for earth. So let's do that. Okay, back to the cooling ducts. Next, I replaced the hot end cooling fan with another Nocto fan. Unfortunately, these hot end fans run on 24 volts and Nocto fans only come in 12 volts. Now the printer's main board actually has a lot of room inside the enclosure. So I just added a buck converter in there in line of the fan's wires. And then using that, I converted the printer's 24 volts down to 12. Now 
Now for the part cooling fan, I'm just using 24 volt blower fans. I'm attaching these to the original wires with a housing and crimping set. These would make replacing these fans in the future a lot easier, or if I ever want to, I don't know, connect a laser engraver or something? But that's for another video. Now with the blower fans installed, there is now strong cooling for my prints from both sides. Okay, so the direct drive kit comes with this piece at the back that still guides your filament from the side into the direct drive. This actually means you're losing quite a lot of Z-axis height for printing. So I decided to turn my filament spool around and run the filament directly into the direct drive. So I no longer need the Bowden tube or the old filament guide. And then I designed this small piece to help with the cable management. I did Michael from Teaching Tech's torture test for cooling and overhangs, and the results are quite impressive. Now, there are both pros and cons to a direct drive setup like this. For me, the main reasons I'm using this is to improve my retraction settings and print with flexible filaments. And I'm not just talking about flexible TPUs, I'm talking about the super flexible TPUs like NinjaFlex. Look at this stuff. That's crazy. This is definitely one of the more challenging filaments to print with, but I was able to do it almost flawlessly with this setup. So even without the Bowden tube, I'm technically still losing around five centimeters of printing height just due to the direct drive motor. So I decided to try this thing. These come with all the needed holes pre-drilled, and they extend the frame Z axis by 10 centimeters. After adding in a few more cable chains, this thing was done. Sadly with my setup, I wasn't able to get all the way to the top, I was about 2 centimeters short. But I was able to reclaim the 5 centimeters taken up by the direct drive and a tiny bit more. Was this worth $40 though? I'll let you decide. So I discovered these things called endoscopes when I was watching Tested the other day. And they're basically these cameras that people shove into their uh, walls to check for leaks or mold or whatever. They're very cheap $20 USB ones you can plug to your computer or Octopi. But for me, I actually ended up using a much more expensive $80 one for its 12 megapixel camera. This one works with a Wi-Fi transmitter so you can control it from a phone app. Huge disclaimer with this one because it's definitely still a work in progress. After using this endoscope for a while, I found that this model actually heats up a lot. Being so close to the heated bed, it got even hotter. And then the air from the part cooling fan got on it, which makes it fog up. So sadly, I wasn't able to get any recordings out of this thing longer than three to five minutes, which really sucks. I recently found this tutorial video from Chili Coke though, who actually took apart an endoscope and permanently mounted it to their tool head, which had way better results. So I might try something like that in the future, but for now, this kind of works. Not only is this a great upgrade to monitor your prints or get cool footage, but up close like this, you can actually troubleshoot your print settings like retractions, layer heights, and all that. You can easily see where blobs or other print issues might be coming from. The stiffer yellow springs from the first video was a nice improvement, but a lot of you guys said the silicone spacers are even better. So I decided to try those. There's no huge difference, but the bed is definitely even more rigid now. 
I learned the hard way that these clips can actually lose their flexibility over time. This resulted in major layer shifts on this very important print I was making, so I switched to proper bed clips that you guys suggested. They're easy to remove and put on, and I realized later on that you really only need two since they're super strong. So just as how your hot end heater block needs a silicone sock, the heated bed can actually use a similar thing. These are insulation pads. They come with an adhesive side for easy installation. These warm up the bed faster and they also trap the heat inside like a blanket, helping you save money on your electric bills. I highly recommend this one for people who print often or use a high bed temperature. As your printer ages, it's important to make sure that the belts are kept fairly tight. These add-ons make it a lot easier to adjust the belt tensions when you need to. One sound I really can't stand is the sound of filament running low. So the reason I love having all the tools for my Ender 3 mounted on the printer itself is because I often use this printer in a few different places. Sometimes a dinner table, the floor, just all over my apartment. So it's nice to have those tools with it all the time to make using it at different places a lot easier. And now it's a lot easier to move around. And lastly, just to complete the whole look. So, will there be a part 4? Well, as much as I love making these videos, isn't it a bit gratuitous now to keep adding things to this one Ender 3? But to answer the question, yes, there will be a part four. Well, kind of, because there was one last thing that just came in the mail recently, completely late that I wasn't able to include in this video. So I'll probably make another video, put some updates in there, maybe a Q&A in there as well. So if you guys have more questions and other suggestions, please let me know. I'll also be doing an individual video about the laser cutter as well. I have some projects planned around that, so expect that soon. Now, huge shout out to Paul Peterson. I don't have like a Patreon or anything set up for you guys to be able to support my channel and what I do, but Paul found the tip option on my Thingiverse profile and just started sending me donations. You are so cool, man. I didn't even know that option was there. That's awesome. Also, thanks to the Facebook group I love to 3D print for giving me advice on some of these upgrades. What the heck? And of course, huge thanks to Cameron Luck for making all the sick music used in my videos. All right, that's everything. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh. Mm -hmm.